Hello, 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 Chicano Studies. Welcome back, welcome back, Prof G. Dropping some knowledge. Yes, uh, today we're going to be focusing on Learning Unit 6, which covers Chapter 11. Uh, my previous video that I had created for you is a little too long, and YouTube is basically giving me grief about the length of the video, so I am going to be creating this one that's a little bit shorter. And um, I'm going to be focusing on World War II, as well as the Zoot Suit Riots and the Sleepy Lagoon Trial. So I'm going to be covering those three items from Chapter 11. But I wanted to begin with Chapter 8. So Chapter 8 is not a chapter that you were assigned. However, a very similar situation manifested in Chapter 8 uh, that also manifested in Chapter 11. And that is what happens to folks of Mexican heritage that join the military, the U.S. military. Uh, but first things first, um, with regards to Chapter 8, Chapter 8 dealt with World War I, and um, even though folks of Mexican heritage were supposed to be exempted from being drafted to World War I, it happened. Not surprising. But nonetheless, um, interesting information. Then we have uh, Marcelino Serna, who happens to be a Mexican immigrant from El Paso. This individual is full-blown beast mode, captures 24 German prisoners by himself. Phenomenal feat, right? And even though he was awarded several medals, both American and uh, from other countries, the U.S. did not uh, bestow upon him the Medal of Honor. Acuna argues persuasively that it was because he happens to be of Mexican heritage and also because he wasn't a citizen. So that is chapter 8. There, this connects to Guy Gabaldon. So Guy Gabaldon joined the Marines at... 17, he ended up capturing more prisoners than Sergeant Alvin York, who was awarded the Medal of Honor. Sergeant Alvin York, surprise, surprise. And I'm not suggesting what Sergeant Alvin York accomplished shouldn't be awarded. Of course I am. However, why is it that he had the opportunity to be awarded that when Guy Gabaldon exceeded what he accomplished and he was only given the Silver Star? So it's not surprising that again Acuna uh, suggests that there is some racism in the military, okay, in, in terms of both treatment and its distribution of medals. What ended up happening with Guy Gabaldon is that he resented uh, the military for being racist. Uh, so when he got back home, uh, he noticed that the way he was treated was very similar to the way folks of Japanese heritage were being um, treated. So basically, uh, este guy was um, drawing parallels between folks of Mexican heritage and folks of Japanese heritage in, ter in terms of being discriminated on the base basis of race and ethnicity. So he um, ended up befriending uh, some Japanese folks. So, and um, actually he was already connected to some Japanese folks prior to him even going to the war. So of course when he comes back from war and he sees what happens to his Japanese friends, uh, with Executive Order 9066, and it confirms his suspicion about racism. All right, uh, next thing about World War II, Company E was the all-Mexican unit. And here we see an interesting phenomenon in which Company E, surprise, surprise, are the folks that get sent to the most dangerous missions. So the suggestion that folks of Mexican heritage are expendable. So, we won't be able to talk about the Bracero program today. Uh, however, in the Bracero program, 
very similar to this idea of being expendable, uh, we see it with um, este company. So in the case of the Bracero program or the emergency farm labor program, uh, it's temporary workers. So it's workers that we can utilize from Mexico and then send them back. Okay, so this idea that they're expendable, we can get rid of them. Similar vein, we see that with company E. Okay. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention about uh, Company E is what happened to Gabriel, uh, Gabriel Navarrete. And um, he uh, was one of the folks that used his voice to advocate for his, um, his, his boys, right? And um, there was basically a cover-up. And in order to buy his silence, if you will, um, they, they promoted Navarrete when this uh, group of um, folks kept getting sent to dangerous missions and people were getting killed left and right. So we promote you to basically try to silence you and the person that was um, who made those poor decisions, we just transfer them out. okay? And um, it's not surprising to see that because often institutions do that, right? They move people that are ineffective instead of just getting rid of them. All right. Last but not least, I wanted to talk about the Sleepy Lagoon trial. And I'm going to connect the Sleepy Lagoon trial to the uh, Zoot Suit Riots. So the Sleepy Lagoon trial uh, started in 1942, uh, ended in 1943. And the trial, in a nutshell, um, is... Jose Diaz was found dead, and the folks that were being tried for his murder were folks of a gang who happened to be of Mexican heritage. So uh, the trial uh, ended with folks of Mexican heritage, um, some of them being um, found guilty of murder, some of assault, and eventually the outcome or that specifically that trial was appealed and so the sentences were reversed but not um, retired which literally means that there's always this doubt about whether or not the folks that were on trial actually committed the crime or not because it never went to trial again um, which means that they didn't get the opportunity to prove their innocence so that's what that means and the reason why it's so influential with the Zoot Suit Riots is that the trial was basically plastered all over the media and very similar to the theme we saw earlier with the Cortina Menace and Cortes and all these bandits in which folks of Mexican heritage are being depicted as criminals. Well, hello, you have the Sleepy Lagoon trial where you're saying, hey, look, these Mexican folks are killing another person that's Mexican. See, I told you they were criminals. And so it's plastered all over, again, with this <clears throat> narrative about and stereotype about Mexicans being criminals. And the reason I connected to the Zoot Suit, riot, uh, Zoot Suit Riots or, and other scholars as well is that uh, the Zoot Suit Riots happened in 1943 and it was basically uh, folks of your American heritage that were in the military, they would go into the communities that were predominantly Mexican-American seeking out pachucos or the folks that wore the zoot suits and attacking them. Okay, that is, that is, that is what happened. And uh, they were being attacked because of the justification that they're criminals, so of course we're gonna go in and 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 do our due diligence, but also because the interpretation that the zoot suit was deemed unpatriotic because these men were supposed to be rationing, right, or or at least folks were asked to ration to help with the war efforts, but they weren't rationing because they were using a lot of uh, cloth to make these. Uh, zoot suits, right, which which had the high waists, um, really, really wide legs, uh, long coat, and so that's it. So you have the combination of the suggestion that they are, that pachucos are unpatriotic, 
And on top of that, right after the Sleepy Lagoon trial, that Mexican folks are criminals, so that toxic combination of stereotypes further, ooh, sorry about that folks, further dehumanized uh, folks of Mexican heritage, particularly uh, Pachucos, and then you had these uh, folks coming back from uh, the war, uh, going into predominantly Mexican communities, which is not communities that they frequent. They're not shopping there. They don't live there. So why are they going there? Well, they're going there because they want to start something. And then when the police gets involved, <laughs> who gets blamed for the riots? Yeah, got it right. It was folks of Mexican heritage. And, um, Finally, a committee was created to investigate what was going on with these Utsu riots, and the committee determined that there's fault on both sides. But, yeah. Uh, the um, trial generated mass hysteria about Mexican folks um, as a threat. That hysteria fed into um, the and fed into the dehumanization of folks of Mexican heritage which then prompted the Zoot Suit riots, and then we're like, oh, let's create a committee because this has gone too far. Mm. So that's a little bit of the 1940s. Uh, I hope to speak to you very, very soon. For those of you who um, would like to read more about the Bracero program, feel free to contact me and I can uh, send you some more links um, that go into the Bracero program a little bit more in depth than Acuna does. All right, folks, have a most pleasant day. I will talk to you soon. Ooh, I will talk to you soon. All right, take care.